Life Audio. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like He's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear His voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus Podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today, we are continuing our Roots series where I am playing some of our earlier episodes that many of you have not heard before, simply because you came to the podcast later. And there are so many episodes that still hold so much value. What we're doing for the rest of this week is I'm airing a four-part series that I did originally in response to the Christianity Today special that they did on the rise and fall of Mars Hill. If you haven't listened to that, I would encourage you to listen to it. But because so much of that experience echoed my own, as well as a lot of women that I knew in ministry, I really wanted to go through the content of that series and explain some of the things that you may not understand if you haven't lived or worked through a similar scenario. And so this episode was originally called The Devil is a Narcissist, and the four-part series deals with church hurt, spiritual abuse, narcissism in the church, and it's one of those topics that's really hard to talk about. It's really hard to listen to. It's hard to imagine that these kinds of things happen behind closed doors of a church. But one of the things that I said early on in this series and what I still really believe is that I believe that God is wanting to reveal some of these things so that he can heal them. We saw that during the pandemic, and I think that continues to this day. And actually, if you go through my episodes, I can see all the analytics of all the episodes. This is one of my highest downloaded episodes of all time. And I think that's because this is an incredibly relevant topic that not a lot of people talk about. And so if this isn't your jam, feel free not to listen to fast forward or go through to a different episode. But I think there's so much value in getting an insider's perspective on what some of this stuff feels like. Because the goal is preventing it from happening in other churches. So I pray that this series is a blessing to you. Today, we are talking about something that's been very present in the, at least the Christian media, the last week or so. If you haven't listened to it yet, there is a podcast series that Christianity Today has done called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. And let me just say that I think they did an excellent, excellent job on it. If you've not listened to that, go ahead and listen to that now before you listen to any more of what I have to say today. But what had happened is as I was listening to it, it touched on a lot of things that I think are really relevant to the big church, big C church today. And there was also some things that I felt like really could use some additional insight and some additional discussion around. And One of the things that I think is really important to look at is this idea of narcissism, both in the church and outside of the church. I think narcissism is almost like a buzzword right now, thanks to TikTok and some other recent resources that have become available. People are becoming more and more aware. However, we don't really talk about narcissism in the Christian culture. I decided really to just dig a little bit deeper into this story of Mars Hill and some of the issues that were brought to light with that investigative journalism that they did at Christianity Today. You may be sitting here thinking, why is she talking about this? What what does she bring to the table? Well, if you don't know me, I guess that's a very valid question. I think if you do know me, it makes perfect sense for me to be talking about this. I got a ton of DMs, just even phone calls of people saying, hey, what do you think about this? I would love to hear your thoughts. I am somebody who has been in ministry for a long time. I've worked both within the local church and with global organizations. I have been an author and a speaker. I've worked with lots of different churches and lots of different capacities And I personally have had three different narcissists up close and personal in my life. Because I care about the spiritual formation of people around me, this has been a topic that I have 
taught on and spoken about and to some degrees written about for quite some time. And I am really thankful, actually, that this topic is starting to come to light. I think one of the things about, again, another buzzword that we're hearing, quote unquote, church hurt, is almost the sense of it only happens in mega churches and it only happens with unhealthy leaders and it only happens with this hidden sin. But I think the reality is, is this is a topic that is far beyond our churches. It is infiltrating politics. It is infiltrating private businesses. Just this idea of narcissism in general is something that we, as the body of Christ, really need to take a look at. To some degree, we're all narcissists. So we all have this tendency to have this self-centered thinking. But I definitely think that it is a tactic that the enemy has used to infiltrate churches and ministries in a way that is almost a silent killer because we don't want to talk about it. And even when we do want to talk about it, it's a very very difficult to talk about, especially with leadership. So today we're going to dive in a little bit. I thought perhaps I would just do one podcast that addressed the whole series. But as I started re-listening to episode one, I have a huge list of things that I think are important to talk about. So what I do want to say is over the last year, I personally have read probably six books on narcissism. And I have come out of a season of just a lifelong recognition that I have had uh, different types of narcissists in my life. I think I was raised by a narcissist, so it gave me a propensity towards objectifying myself within that specific type of abuse and not setting boundaries and those kinds of things. So actually, I've also been in therapy for it. I have spent a lot of time uh, learning about the intellectual side of it, the behavioral side of it, the spiritual side of it. So I am not a professional on the psychological aspect of narcissism in any way, shape, or form. My background is in spiritual formation, Bible exposition, and ministry leadership. However, personally, I can speak to some of these issues in a couple different capacities, both personally and professionally. So All that to say, I have really worked hard at cutting out the narcissists in my life in an effort to chase after healthy, appropriate, God-honoring, life-giving relationships. And there was a period of my life where I would just feel drained. I remember somebody saying to me, you know, there are people in your life that are going to fill you up and there are people in your life that are going to drain you. And you need to get to a place where you're seeking to be around the people that fill you up more than you're around the people that drain you. That is a very, very basic way to look at those narcissistic relationships in your life. And that's easier said than done. But I say that from this perspective of this is a subject that has really been a guiding principle for a lot of my life. And so I want to speak to some of those things. And and then also there is a level of obedience that comes when you do any kind of communication type ministry, whether it is speaking or writing or podcasting. For me anyway, I'm not just content creator. (laughs) You know, I, my goal is to know Jesus and to make him known. And my goal is to help you know him and make him known. And so sometimes there are these things that get planted in my spirit. And I know that they're things that God wants me to write or speak on. I have to wait on God's timing for that. This is one of those things that for the last year, I have felt like God has wanted me to speak on or write on, but it hasn't felt like the right time. And I'll tell you, when I started listening to the rise and fall of Mars Hill, I realized that perhaps the things that I have been sitting on are things that God now wants me to share. And so that's what this podcast is. It's an effort to be obedient, first and foremost, to God. And the secondary goal is to help you avoid or deal with some of these difficult relationships in your own life. Where does this fit into my typical content? Well, it's different. And if you don't want to listen, feel free to skip ahead to a different episode or to go back to one of my other episodes, you don't have to listen. My hope is that this would be an episode that would bring you value to your life and maybe open eyes a little bit. 
So with that said, we're going to get started. And again, not all of this is directly from the Mars Hill podcast. Some of this is just from my own personal experience, my life experience. When I talk about narcissism, I do that in the light of three different individuals in my life that were definitely narcissistic and perhaps acted differently from one another, but yet there was a common thread of power and control woven throughout. And we're going to kind of get into that too. So I'm not sure how many episodes this is going to be. So kind of hang with me. And I'm not even sure what I'm going to call this yet. I'm praying about that. But I thought it would be helpful to kind of just start yeah, at the the starting point that, that they talk about in in the podcast. So one of the things that if you don't know about Mars Hill, please go listen to that, that episode series. But if you don't know, Mars Hill was a large megachurch that dissolved at the hands of a narcissistic leader. And one of the things that I think really stood out to me was some of the things that they're saying as far as how they got there. Narcissism in general is, I think, an underlying factor in that you hear in all six of those episodes. And while they do say, I think what some one individual makes a comment, people would rather have narcissists leading their churches than deal with the unhealthy patterns. I think in general, narcissism is something that becomes the default position. I think regardless of the industry that you're looking at, there's like 10 top careers that narcissists tend to settle into. And I was actually really surprised to find that ministry is one of them. But, you know, you might find your more typical industries like a CEO or a surgeon or an administrator, like a principal at a school or those kinds of things. It's those real leadership heavy positions that tend to have a lot of narcissism in them. Now, I'm not saying by any way, shape or form that somebody in those roles are narcissistic. I think it's a danger to say that narcissism doesn't exist within the church just because it's the church. I think just just like any other industry or any other profession, there is a level of that. And as we've seen, so one of the things they talk about is these patterns of persistent sin, just arrogance, quick temper, domineering leadership, and how those kind of became these red flags within this church scenario and how that became so difficult to work under. I think about this in other relationships. I think in personal relationships, Patterns of persistent sin are different than individual sins, and not in the sense that, of course, they both separate you from God, but somebody that falls into an individual sin, sometimes that is despite their intention. It's just, you know, evidence of the fallen world we live in. But when there is a pattern of persistent sin, that's a whole different thing. That That is a measure of character, especially if it is a believer that really does not see this pattern. I think several relationships in my life. And I think on one hand, if I think about the narcissistic relationship and I think about somebody that has just a pattern of being domineering and arrogant and quick tempered. And then I think about somebody that may have acted in arrogance or maybe have a temper issue. I think there's a difference. I think there's a difference between somebody that gets angry over a situation, loses their temper, and then later feels bad about it versus the person that just operates in that all the time. If you are somebody that's kind of caught in the middle, the thought is that perhaps as a neutral party, you could go to that individual and say, hey, I don't really like that and I don't think you should have acted that way. In a healthy individual, that would be received. I mean, I'm under really healthy leadership now, but I think of the leaders that I serve under now. And I think if I went to them and I said, you know what, I really was hurt by the way that you spoke to me, it would be well received and there would be an apology and probably a recognition and then some sort of work towards a resolution to hold them accountable. In other relationships in my life, I think back to even my childhood, if I were to voice my discomfort at somebody's domineering attitude or their arrogance or their temper, that would only lead to more abuse. 
that's, I think, the difference between the narcissist and somebody that's just acting out of sin or lack of guarding their heart and giving into the moment. I think in my scenario, if I ever did, like as a child, if I ever did voice my discomfort at the inappropriate way I would be treated, that would result in more severe punishment. And I think one of the things that I have heard a lot in this last week or so even from people that have been listening to this series is how could it get that bad? If you think about that in terms of a leader that exhibits some of those properties, those unhealthy behavior patterns, there is no difference between a kid that is cowering because of a, an abusive parent versus a staff member that is afraid to speak up because of this pattern. Again, the pattern of persistence in it. Okay, friends, we're actually going to stop there and join us tomorrow for the continuation of this discussion. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you will find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helps encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going. Keep going.